Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be going over the full explanation of how to get a Lux bike, the full in-depth thing explaining how every single thing works, even the stuff that you don't see happen which does happen. That uh, I'm going to explain all of that to you today because I still get questions on uh, why is it not working, I got 50k and I don't have a Lux bike, it's because it's just not how it works. Um, it is all down to chance. Uh, this is 100%. It is not you get 250k, you get a Lux bike. It's not how it works. It is all down to chance. Uh, I'll explain a bit on how it works now. So, first of all, do what I'm doing right here in the video behind you, or the video that is being played on the screen right now, of me just going through the desert and just doing flips and tricks and getting lots of rep. Uh, it took me five minutes to get 50k rep so to the people that keep saying oh i don't have all day to know life like you i don't really even play this game anymore but i'm just going to show you how it works and explain how it is easy it takes five minutes once you're just a, a average player at descenders this takes five minutes to do uh you can do it five minutes or you can spend 25 minutes and get yourself 250k rep it's up to you um it is going to give you a better chance of getting a Lux bike, that is how it works. Uh, but I'll go over the active rep and then the the, the static rep that people seem to get confused about. Um, yeah, I'll go over that now. So active rep is the comparison between the two right here. So the static rep is the one that you'll see in the lobby and whenever you're in a bike park or whenever you're not in career mode. When you're not in career mode, you do not have active rep. Active rep only happens when you are in career mode, so any rep that you get in career mode gets added to your static rep, and that is your total rep, basically. And then the dynamic rep is, or active rep, is the rep that you're earning inside of uh, the career mode. So me doing all the flips and stuff, and getting myself points when I stop doing the flips they get added onto my total rep and that is how the active and static rep works so you want to be gaining 250,000 active rep inside a career session to have a hundred percent chance of getting an extraordinary that is not a hundred percent chance of getting a lux bike that is a hundred percent chance of getting a purple rarity item which is an extraordinary 50k rep guarantees that you'll get a 100% chance of getting a blue item. It's technically an 80% chance because 20% of that is taken up by it. It could be an extraordinary as well. That is a blue rarity item. That doesn't mean you'll get a blue luck spike because I said blue. Uh, it is genuinely a blue rarity item. That is the rare stuff. That is the stuff that contains the most items in the game that's why i tell people to aim for it because it's a lot easier to do next up is explaining how the rep spinning works uh, it's technically the way it works is you know when you open a, a crate in rocket league or at least you used to be able to do that uh, when the crate would spin it would spin and you get a random item and then you'd be like oh yeah sick i got a black market mystery decal that is the same way that it works just behind the scenes of how you get a Lux bike. It spins that random chance, that random number. So the Lux bike that you want might be assigned to the number 12, but it has to spin through if you get 250k, it has to spin through and land on 12 out of 61. If you land on 12, you get your Lux bike. If you don't, then you get some other item, but that's how it works. It is essentially a random chance on getting it. I'll put the comment up on the screen, which is a really good uh, version of basically explained it and I pinned it and I was like, oh, yeah, that is exactly how it works behind the scenes. You get a random chance, a random chance. So it's the same with CSGO cases. Say that your uh, the Lux bike is the knife in the case, but you spin and all the other items in the case are reds. They're all of other cool, extraordinary items, but they're not the knife that you want. So that is the same way it works. When it spins, it randomly lands on it and it will give it to you. You're lucky if you get a Lux bike, and you're unlucky if you don't. It's different when it's you have 50k rep. I ask people to go and get 50k rep because I know a lot of people aren't as experienced as I am playing this game and it's a lot harder for them to get 250k but 50k is in a ballpark range of maybe in their skill level that they could get it. So that narrows it down even more. So that adds in a ton of other items that it could be and your odds go up ridiculously. So instead of it being your one item in 61 it's now your one item in over 200 items possibly that is the chance of getting what you want basically 
So you now know how everything works behind the scenes and how having a chance again a luck swag is hard to do. This takes half skill and half pure luck really. Uh, you need to be good at the game to be able to get the amount of rep that you need uh, but you also have to be lucky in the chance of getting a luck spike. It took me quite a while to get my first one. Uh, I didn't have it for at least six months uh, of playing, uh, well making Descenders YouTube videos. Uh, I never had a luck spike myself. Um, I have all of them now because I put in the time and effort to get every item at the time in the game and yeah I'm gonna go over how it works now. So the, be the best way to farm is the desert and the best way to farm the desert is by doing fakie. Fakie is super duper easy, you can literally just put down your controller. Um, if you have the fakie balance perk, you need that perk. It is one that I'll put it up on the screen so you know what the perk looks like. But you need to aim for that. Uh, it is the best way to farm, genuinely. Best way out there that you can get is to f farm any item is by doing that. Um, I'll cut in some of my other footage from my other video now, actually. Location. Location is a very important part when doing any sort of rep run. So uh, basically what I would suggest is to go and get your 100k rep just by doing a few runs of trying to get from the start to the finish from the highlands to the peaks basically. Uh, once you get your 100k you get career plus and career plus gives you access to the desert and the desert is probably the best place in my personal opinion because it makes it very easy for you to farm rep as you can see just by in this clip being shown of me riding backwards I've got 9,000 rep just by riding through a flat piece of terrain. That's how easy it is to get rep in this location and that's why I think it's one of the key points to point out when starting up your rep farming I'm guessing. Crew members. Crew members are a big crucial point in any sort of run. They will literally keep you alive. There is one crew member which is the S tier. Above all you should definitely go with it which is increase impact force so you can take more of a beat in when you land. It's literally a picture of a front wheel with a little explosion going off at the bottom, I suppose you could say with a down arrow. It means that you can take more impact when you land. So if you're jumping off of something and you see that orange triangle, if you only see it for a split second, usually you might die without it. But when you see it with, uh, you have this impact perk or crew member, it means that you'll be able to take this so much easier. And I think that is probably one of the best ones that you should go for straight away, because it will keep you alive more than anything else. Because I don't know where I would be if I didn't have that perk. That perk is so useful. So for the next one I'd suggest uh, it's definitely spin speed. If you're going to do, because you need to be doing lots of flips and 360s and stuff to get yourself some points when you're doing some of these, uh, you want to get spin speed up because it will make it a lot easier for yourself and you're less likely to die if you have more spin speed because you can spin quicker to get out to get yourself out of sticky situations basically. So if you flip and you're like, oh shit, that's a bit too close to the floor. Um, you should be able to make it around with the extra spin speed. It should be really helpful. Same with uh, if you get your tweak speed as well it's also really good for 360s is probably the best thing that it's useful for is 360s because when you tweak out your 360 you're spinning a lot quicker and that tweak speed will amp that up really all fast um yeah i definitely advise getting those ones too so for the fourth one which i think is very crucial but uh if you're not too keen on it uh it's definitely get the fakie balance one because when you get the steepness maps of like two to four it's really easy to get really loads amount, you can get like super high amounts of rep from just doing a fakie the entire course and it's definitely one of the best things to choose one of the perks. If it's out of all the other ones, uh, definitely go for the ones I mentioned first and then definitely go for this one over anything else. Even if you want to taste, take bail impact, that's really not going to happen and you shouldn't really worry about it. And you shouldn't be bailing anyway because bailing ends your rep so you shouldn't be doing that and you just need to practice if you are at the moment. I just want to cut in here, uh, due to the new bikes, uh, you there. there's new bikes obviously, well they're not really new now, but there's a lot of new players that came in only when there was new bikes. There's a lot of people that were before, but there's mainly players that are like new really. Um, so I just want to say, please do not use the hardtail or the downhill bike. The downhill bike weighs too much and it slows you down when doing flips. Uh, yeah, you'll take better impact, but you're not going to be getting many tricks out, therefore you're not going to be getting much rep. The hardtail takes impact so badly that it's just going to kill you half the time and the tricks take too long to really give you any, I don't know, help with it really. Um, 
the same way that the can can takes quite a while to, for you to get off your bike and get back on it on the regular full suspension bike or the enduro bike the tail whips take too long and um, the tuck no hander also takes too long compared to the regular no hander um, so yeah i just wanted to Put this in the tricks aren't really worth it the bar spin is the only one that's quick enough and gets you enough points to make it worth it but it's still really not worth it and you're not going to be doing tricks much once you get used to riding fakie it's so easy when you can do that last stand so last stand really depends on what skill level you are last stand is ridiculously useful it's probably one of the best upgrades or no, not really an upgrade but one of the best things you can do to keep your rep really high so basically last stand, when you're in last stand it will give you sort of a double bonus without you seeing it. So all the rep will count up a lot faster usually than it would regularly. Uh, although you are in last stand so if you bail you are out, you are done for that run. Um, it is definitely worth getting used to being on last stand. It still takes, like when I log on for the day and I try to get me some items I'll just get myself something random. So I'll do probably one or two nodes and I might bail on the first few goes and I will literally just once I've got those like one or two bails out of the way from being on last stand straight away and dying I will then do my 250k run because you just gotta get in the groove basically and that will make it a lot better for yourself but last stand if you're very new to this game it is probably not worth doing it because of the fact that you're just not used to being with, uh, without that little safety net of having a life because uh, if you don't have any of the lives and you, you die, you're out and that's going to make it a lot harder for you because especially if you're someone who bails quite enough often or at least, well, just will bail uh, if you know that you're going to bail at some point it's definitely worth having one to two lives because it, if, as long as you have a life that boost won't be there so if, you, if you're having, if you're going to have zero lives basically uh, make sure you at least got some practice in. So for you experienced people that know that you're probably not going to bail and if you do, at least you've got a lot, a lot of wreck before that happens, definitely do the last stand thing, it's definitely worth it. Steepness. Steepness is definitely, thing, is definitely something to look out for. So if you've got that fakie balance, you want to be looking for those low, low flat, nice and zero steepness uh, levels because having four steepness is pretty good for you as long as you can handle it because the more speed you are, the more speed you have basically, so the faster you're going when you're in fakie will get you those more points, they will get you more points basically. So having a f somewhat flat level, so four is probably my maximum at the moment because I've tried to do a full fakie run on a completely steep like max out steepness track and I could not do it at all. Um, and it's definitely worth uh, making sure you can get that fakie down for those low steepness maps and when you're doing high steepness maps it's really good for you because it means you can get to about 10,000 to 15,000 rep off of a literally hmm let's say 15 yeah 10 to 15 thousand rep if you're on last stand and you're doing a really steep map it will get you a nice decent chunk of rep it will do really well for yourself um, it will make it a lot easier for you to farm rep out of this because when you're when you have steepness on your side the bigger the jumps you have and uh, like further you fly the more points you will get doing those jumps so it's definitely worth it trying to find the steep ones if you just go in for regular flips and jumps because if you're not doing the fakie balance it's really worth it getting those steep tracks in rather than just doing the flat ones and only getting like 5,000 per run on last stand on a flat map just doing flips so it's definitely worth looking out for those steep and flat maps depending on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to go for. Riding fakie. So there's two ways of doing this really well there's uh, the option that Hazy proposed to me which was go go to the first checkpoint and then take you all the way towards the finish or wherever you want to get to and then slow down until you stop collect the rep and then reset so this stops you from going to any other node you literally just have to find the one you want to ride and then go from there uh, this would be probably really good because you get to practice the node itself and it will make it really easy for yourself and four or five times and you have like 40k and that's pretty easy because there's only one node and it cuts out the loading times and everything else which is pretty cool so I didn't ever think of that um, which is actually pretty good so if you want to do that go for that but for riding, uh, riding fakie is key it gives you so many points you do not want to miss out on them because they will literally up your points so quick if you had like a recently I've had 
a map where it's been consistently quite flat nodes and I got my fakie balance I hit 250k rep so fast I actually think I only used like 10 nodes and then I was there and that was really sick so it's definitely worth doing um, and it's definitely worth learning to ride fakie and it's definitely 100% worth doing that well, I hope past me covered pretty much everything that you needed to know. Uh, the, that is genuinely the best way to farm. We found out how to do it quite a while ago. There's a video if you want to watch it in full without me cutting it into this video. Um, I basically just took that video that I made and put it in this one. Just because then it's all in one place and it's only one watch. And yeah, because I used to tell people to go to watch other videos. But fair enough. If you want to just stick in this video, you can. Uh, but hopefully that explains literally everything. I'm going to say it again. It is a chance that you get a luck spike. It's not 100%. Um, a lot of people don't get that and it's not your total rep that is going to get you your luck spike It's the one that you earn in a session um, Yeah, if I keep <laughs> if I if I get enough people that are still confused I'll try and make another video on it. Um, but I don't know I might go back to making descendants videos. I wanted to uh, play the game a bit more I don't know really uh, I doubt it it depends really uh, but yeah oh, thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this I hope it makes a whole lot more sense for you uh, if you want check out my other videos that aren't descendants related they're still really good as well uh, but yeah I'll, I'll see you a lot later have a good one